Hey watchers, welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I want to do a head-to-head -head comparison between two very popular Japanese dive watches. Uh, on the one side I have the Ray 2, the Orient Ray 2, which I reviewed uh, late last year. And since I acquired this, I kind of always thought that, well, I got to do a head to head against the XKX at some stage because they're uh, kind of in the similar price range and they're both so popular. So yes, uh, on the other side, I have my Seiko SKX. And I think uh, when I'm comparing uh, these two, you know, popular Japanese divers, I have to use the SKX because this is a full divers 200 meter rather than the new 5KX, the, the new Seiko uh, 5 sports models because that's kind of like reduced in specifications as you've seen in my head-to-head -head video uh, between, uh, you know, the old and the new uh, SKX and 5KX watches. So I'm using the SKX even though it is actually the discontinued model. Okay, so let's uh, get into it and see how these two fare against one another. All right, guys, so here we have the watches on the table. Uh, so just in way of formal introduction of the models. Uh, on the left corner, we have the Orient Ray 2 model number down the bottom here, FAA. 2005 is generally uh, sufficient for you to search uh, this particular model up. A watch that I reviewed kind of uh, late last year. Uh, and then on uh, the right corner, we have, of course, the kind of cult favorite uh, Seiko Divers 200 meter SKX 007. I think this watch pretty much needs no introduction. It really is so well known. A watch that I I uh, reviewed, I think, in the first year of my channel, in fact. So, you know, check that out if you want. You know, it's, it's a little bit of an old review now, but uh, it is still, of course, one of my most popular videos. Okay, so here we go. These two watches, what are the similarities? Uh, so they are both similar dimensions. You know, the Orient is slightly smaller, a millimeter smaller. 316L steel with uh, screw-down construction. So, you know, I'll just show you the back there, screw-down case backs. Uh, and then they both have the screw down uh, crowns, right, for divers 200 meter water resistance uh, for the Seiko. The Orient isn't an ISO 6425, but it is also rated at 200 meters. They have unidirectional 120 click dive style bezels on both watches. Mineral glass, right, no sapphire here, and aluminium uh, bezel inserts on both. And they both have great loom. Orient actually does have pretty good loom. And of course, Seiko divers always have good loom. And they are both true in-house manufacture pieces with their own movements from within the company, as you guys know. In terms of pricing, uh, the Orient is uh, MSRP of 340 The Seiko SKX, of course, is no longer in production, but original MSRP as I far as I can gather is 450 USD. A realistic sale price is around $140 for the Ray 2. Uh, and this one, when, you know, just before it was discontinued, was about 200 USD, 210 USD. Uh, the prices of these have fluctuated upwards. So I'm not going to quote what you can get this for now, but originally, just before it stopped production, was around $210. And that's kind of what the price that I'm going to be uh, comparing this with. Okay, guys, so let's move into the categories here. So first up, okay, caliber. All right, the Orient is uh, the uh, F6922. That's the caliber in here, whereas the SKX, of course, has the old uh, 7S movement, 7S26. Uh, the Orient, uh, as, as you probably know, has hacking, has manual winding, uh, has a slightly higher power reserve and, uh, and one more jewel in here. I think it's no real controversy to say that the Orient should get the mark for the caliber here, right? It's just got the, you know, the, the edge on the specs here. It is, of course, also a reliable caliber. Uh, you know, as, as good as the 7S is, I have to give the mark to the Orient. I don't think this is controversial at all for this category. 8 versus 7 here. Okay, next mark. Case versus bezel. Uh, I think the Orion uh, is actually quite a good case. You know, like it's got it's got slightly uh, rounded sides here, right? And the transitions, the, the the design overall is pretty good, but it's pretty conventional. It's got a nine o'clock crown. 
you know, just, you know, lungs that stick out to have the uh, bracelet endings in between. Nothing too super groundbreaking. It's just a well-executed case, whereas the SKX is just, you know, definitely a hate here. I think the Seiko case craft really comes through in terms of that, you know, that mirror finish on the side there, just the lug design, a four o'clock crown. It's just different and its own thing. It doesn't copy anyone. It does, it's, it's like nothing else really. It's it's original. So I think I have to give the case mark to the Seiko here. The bezel on the Seiko is also more original. It's got that you know double uh, kind of squares, uh, row of squares here, whereas the Orient is much more a uh, kind of convex uh, coin edge. The Seiko is slightly you know concave here. It slopes in and the edge of the bezel is higher than the glass, uh, you know, so the bezel is also more functional and original. I have to give the mark to the Seiko on this category. Uh, I think in that case also not so controversial. I give an 8 to the Seiko, 7 to the Orient Ray for the case and bezel mark here. Okay, next up, Dial and Crystal. Okay, so I think uh, the, the, the crystal wise, uh, I think as you guys know, they're both mineral crystal. Okay, nothing too uh, controversial there to say that they will get the same mark. Seiko, you know, have the hard legs, but a lot of people think that that's kind of just marketing uh, gimmick, right? Nothing too special about hard legs. It's mineral glass, uh, except there's some propriety treatment. So I'm giving, you know, if it was just a pure mark, I'll give it the same mark. Uh, the Orient uh, Dial, okay, so Dial wise, Orient does have applied indices, uh, but, you know, having said that, uh, the Seiko, despite the fact that it's printed, has just, I think, just more character. You know, the large indices, superbly legible, even more legible than the Orient, I think, overall. Uh, and the strong chaptering, right, it's got a more, I guess, just bolder chaptering. I, I think the mark goes to the Seiko. I have to give it to the, the more original and, you know, popping look of the Seiko here. So Seiko takes it on this category, 8 versus 7, you know, again, same as the last category. Okay, next up then, bracelet, uh, you know, uh, mark here. So the original SKX a Jubilee bracelet was definitely nothing to write home about. I had a folded link bracelet. I've replaced it, uh, you know, with uh, another old uh, uh, diver. So original Seiko thing it just happens to fit this. But the, the original one was a shocker. It had folded metal links uh, as it is. Right? Even this one has uh, folded uh, center links here, right? The hollow. Uh, and it's fairly conventional um, clasps here, right? So press metal, press metal there. Um, no dive extension, you know, four point micro adjustment, and push button release. So fairly conventional there, nothing very special with hollow end links, as you can see there, right? Hollow end links, uh, as is the original Seiko. Uh, the Orient, on the other hand, uh, has solids, right? The, the, the links are solid, three piece per link, right? The class is the same in terms of uh, being pressed metal construction and push button release, and it does also have hollow end links, but I think overall, Definitely, uh, you know, just put it side by side. The, the bracelet is better on the Orient, right? This one has that jingly jangliness, which is unpretentious, but the Orient, you know, finishing overall construction, the solidity is better. I have to give the mark to the Orient on this particular category here. I think, again, not very controversial at all here. Okay, next up, quality. Okay, this one is uh, not so easy to mark. I think the Orient uh, overall fit and finish, I have to say, is pretty darn good for the price, right? You're going to pay less than 150 for this. This fit and finish quality, right? The transitions uh, between the finishings, pretty darn good. Can't complain there. Uh, but the Seiko, I have to say, is it's just as good. And you know, the case craft is excellent. In fact, if it's just about the case, again, I think I would... Uh, give the mark to the Seiko, but uh, you know the bracelet being poorer uh, and then being uh, notorious for having alignment issues for the chapter ring as well as the bezel, you know that minuses it off a bit. My my particular specimen is actually not bad at all. There's just a slight misalignment on the chapter ring, but overall it's it's pretty good, I think. Uh, but you know I think in terms of uh, the, that quality factor, that that loses a bit of mark but it gains it back in the overall, you know, just a purely the case being better, and then the bracelet loses again. Uh, overall, I, I have to give the same mark to them. They kind of pull out even, and I've given quality mark here eight for both the Seiko and the Orient. Okay, next up, 
style. So, uh, you know, as, as I always say, this is the most subjective uh, of all uh, the categories here. I think the Orient is a very classic looking diver, right? It's, it's just got a lot of classic uh, design cues. It's got some great design elements, you know, I really like the dial, uh, the, the hands, you know, the bezel with the you know, little indentations here. That's something I don't see in other watches. Uh, but uh, I think the Seiko uh, overall just pops more, right? It, it's just more original. It's got more presence. Uh, the legibility is higher as a diver. Uh, there's just so many things that make this a classic. And so I'm going to give the style mark, you know, subjectively, uh, I'm going to give the mark to the Seiko today. It's eight versus seven here. Okay, next up, guys, performance. Right, performance category, right, the Orient, uh, no doubt, in my mind, is a solidly made 200 meter diver, uh, but why would I give it to the SKX? Well, of course, it's got the ISO 6425 credentials. It is a diver's 200 meter watch. You know, they're both at 200 meters, but this one uh, got that ISO credentials, plus it's overall, I, I think, just edges ahead on the loom as well. Orient is no slouch but the, the loom on the Seiko, uh, as with many of their divers, is best in class. And performance-wise, I'm going to have to give them up to the Seiko today. So nine versus eight on the performance category is what I've given today. Okay. All right, next up, the eighth one is durability. Right, okay. Um, in terms of materials, they are the same in hand here, right? It's It's... Uh, 316L steel, it's got aluminium insert for the bezels, it's got mineral glass for the crystal on top of the dial. So overall, it's, it's the same materials, in-hand solidity feels the same, they're, they're nearly the same weight. I think Orient just a smidgen slightly heavier. So materials are not absolutely premium, but they are perfectly serviceable, uh, and I can't separate this too. So durability-wise, I've given them the same mark, 7 out of 10 for both of them. Value, okay, nearly there guys, value category, right. So why did I give uh, these marks for value, right? Look, I think they are both great value in-house, you know, proper in-house manufactured dive watches. The Orient gives, you know, a perfectly great and solid piece. Uh, and it's a Seiko, it gives a bit more, right, in terms of design and uh, ISO uh, compliance design, right? You do have to pay more for the Seiko even when it was produced widely, right? It was cheaper to pay for an Orient. In fact, it's about two thirds the price, right? The Orient uh, is to about two thirds the price of the Seiko, but the Seiko, I think, uh, gives what you pay for. You're not just paying for name. You do get more uh, feature set in the Seiko. So I think the price difference is completely justified in this case. Uh, they're both great value. Seiko is slightly more expensive and yeah, gives you more. I think they are the same. They pull out the same on the value stakes. I think many people consider both of these to be great value. I've given it the same mark today, 8 out of 10 for both. Okay, guys, last one, brand. Okay, brand category. So again, something that is uh, slightly subjective. Uh, the Orient, all right, perfectly respectable quality brand that do a lot of good pieces and a lot of people follow them and like them. I just think that uh, Seiko, uh, I think it's not controversial at all to say that they are more widely known. They have greater horological history and achievements. So I have to give the brand mark to Seiko here, right? In terms of range, almost nothing is matching Seiko, you know, from the cheapest watch they make to the most expensive Grand Seikos. There is nothing that has that range that Seiko has. So Seiko gets an eight for me all the time. Uh, today, Orient gets a seven here. All right, so what is the conclusion? Right, Seiko takes it fairly convincingly, right? This particular head to head is taken fairly convincingly uh, by the SKX. So guys, in summary, we have two you know, great budget dive watches. Uh, they tied up uh, in the marks for quality, durability, and value. Uh, the Orient uh, does take it in uh, having a better caliber and a better bracelet, but Seiko, the SKX, has to win overall because it has the better mark for the case and bezel design. It's got the better dial style mark. You know, I gave it, it's subjective, but I gave it the style mark. It takes it on performance as well as the brand category. So there we go, guys. My head-to-head -head of these two very popular, iconic even, you know, dive watches, budget dive Japanese watches. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap-up.
So there you go guys, my comparison of the Orient Ray 2 against the Seiko SKX007 in this particular iteration. Let me know what you think about my scores, my comparison, uh, particularly if you have experience in these budget uh, Japanese divers. If you own uh, either or both of these models, would certainly love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, if you disagree with any of my scores, you know, that's fine. Some of them are subjective, but do let me know uh, why you think you would have marked differently. Uh, certainly all comments are read and I try to respond to every comment. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.